Hello everybody and welcome to the Aussie YouTube Hop. It is April 2018 and the theme this month is autumn. Our sponsor this time around is Antivira Scrap and Craft. Please consider supporting our sponsor by shopping at her amazing online store. I've left some links below. By supporting our sponsors, we are able to continue these giveaways that we bring to you every time we do a hop. To be in the draw for the giveaway, all you need to do is leave a comment below and then click on the description box and find the next person in the hop, watch her video, comment and like, and then go to her description box and find the next person in the link and repeat. Keep hopping along until you get back to my video, which means that you've commented on everyone's video and that way you are in the draw for the giveaway. I'll be putting up pictures of the giveaway a little later in my video. So for this hop, I thought I would play with this beautiful stitched leaf die from Lawn Fawn. This is one of the items in the April kit for Antivira Scrap and Craft. And I've already made a few cards using this die, which I'll leave a link for below. I thought it would be really interesting to do an art layout using these dies. And so I grabbed my Jane Davenport face stamp. I also have this Diane Reevely art journal, which I've started using more of this year, only because I want to start making art for me. I usually make art to give away or for swaps or for birthdays. And um, this year I thought it would be really nice to have some art that I can keep in my collection. So I'm going to start by laying down some color in my art journal here. I'm using the Dina Wakely scribble sticks. I'm using the color orange. I'm, I'm anticipating this to be a lovely, warm, rich autumn spread. And so I'm looking for colors that are representative. So oranges and browns and greens are are the palette, are the colors that I'm using for that kind of palette. The next thing I do, and I've been very wary of using water in these journals, is I'm going to grab some acrylic paint. So I grab some acrylic paint, put it down on my mat, and then just do a really light spray so that it's more fluid than painty, but not so fluid that it's just going to sop all over my page. My objective here is just to get a little bit of color. It doesn't matter whether there are marks or heavier spots than others on the page at this stage. When I put the scribble sticks down, I used the green and the browns on the outside um, to create some, to create kind of like a vignette where the outside is darker than the inside. I then go back in now. I want to add a little bit more orange. And I usually find that the best way to apply this is once the paint has dried on the paper, the scribble stick will grab. Dipping it in the paint is not doing anything and putting it on wet paper is not doing anything. It's best applied on dry paper. I'm adding more color on the, uh, I'm adding more color around the edges and leaving the inside a little bit lighter. I then grab this Hero Arts Shadow Ink and I'm just adding a very light green to the pages. The next thing I do is I grab this Kaiser Craft stencil that is wood grain and I'm using Gathered Twig here to apply a wood grain effect to my background. Next, I grab this second stencil by Kaiser Craft and I'm grabbing vintage photo this time and I'm inking it up and I'm just stenciling in these leaf patterns on the right hand side of my paper. On the right hand side of my layout. Next, I've die cut a whole lot of my leaves out of different colors of cardstock. I've got a 
a dark green, a light green, a craft color, and a brown. And I am basically just arranging them now around the page in a formation that's pleasing. I then attach each one down with PVA glue and I'm making sure that the colors are alternating between green and brown and craft. And once that first layer is down, I then go back to the other types of leaves and I try to fill in the gaps where possible, um, underneath sometimes, on top sometimes, just to give it a fuller look. Now that the background is done, I want to focus more on the focal image, which will be this girl. So I grab some of my watercolor paper, this is 300 GSM, and I cut a little bit so that it would fit inside my Stampaholic. I then place the, the face on the door and I stamp it down and it stamps pretty nicely. Uh, next come the eyes and I go for open eyes. I almost wanted to have the closed eye one But I decided to use the open eye kind of smoky eye one There's one that's more bright eye and one that's more smoky and so I go for this one. I think she's pretty eyes I then choose one of the noses and then one of the lips and the stamp set is really, and the stamp set is so much fun to use. I will have a video on just different faces that you can make with this stamp set. All right, it is now time to try to incorporate this pretty bald, stark face into this gorgeous existing background. So the first thing I do is cut her out. Next thing comes the coloring of her face, and what I'm doing when and what I'm using here is some Prima watercolors. This is the Decadent Pie. This is the Decadent Pie pan, and I use this pan for skin colors and metallics mainly. So the first thing I, I do is I use the lightest yellow there is to give an overall color on her face. Next, I'm using the second lightest gold and I'm going in in areas where um, if you touch your face areas that are deep so underneath the eyes around the face um, on the inside of your nose underneath your lips these are areas that are receding into so they're like valleys and I'm leaving areas that stick out or poke out of your face like your nose and your cheeks and your lips I'm leaving those as um, they are the mountains and I'm leaving those as the highlights and so they're going to be sort of whitish. So what I'm doing is I'm going back over the lines to blend in where I've left, where there's a little mark between the darker yellow and the lighter yellow. You can see her come to life here as I add color to her lips and she totally comes to life when I start adding her eye color. I then decide that I want to add just a little bit more dark so I go in with a brown and I go over the areas that I had originally added the deep yellow to. And as you add more layers you create more shadows and it looks more dimensional so the face really comes to life here. And she looks pretty cute for a bald girl, I think. The next thing I decide to do is give her a head dress made of leaves. All I did was I clustered different leaf shapes and colors to create um, kind of mock hair, but it's really a headdress. So I'm not gonna worry about any hair for her. It's just gonna be a head dress of leaves. Now she looks pretty crazy just sitting there uh, floating in the page so I need something to ground her. I go through an embellishment pack I have here that is autumn themed and I find the perfect saying here, sentiment that says blessed. I did think about the other one which said I heart fall but this is beautiful. This, this is blessed. I really love this.
I then try to think of something else to put on the left hand side. There is a cut apart sheet here. They are all from the Antivira Scrap and Craft April kit. Um, I love this cut apart. It just says fall and I think it is the perfect sentiment to put here on this layout. I go ahead and fussy cut all the white bits out and for the inner parts I do go in there with a scalpel knife. I'm applying 3D foam tape to the sentiment banner, but I'm only applying PVA glue to the head of the girl. So she is flat, the sentiment is raised, and the leaves on her head, they're layered so they will be raised as well. So for the fall sentiment, I'm just going to ink around the edges so that the white is not showing. And for the pieces that are really on the inside, I'm going to grab my Tombow black marker and color those in as well. Next I bring in these leaves that I've die cut out with pattern paper. I chose pattern paper because I wanted the pattern to come through after I've sprayed them. I'm using this amazing new spray that is also in the April kit from Antivira Scrap and Craft called Lindy Spray and it is the most vibrant, the most pearlescent, the most shiny. It's just such a beautiful spray. It's a new product out on the market now and this is the first time I've ever tried it and it's amazing. It really really makes these leaves shine. You can make these leaves a lot darker by letting them sit in the ink or you can make them really light by just letting them touch the ink. And the best thing is, is that when they're light, you can really see the pattern of the existing paper that you had the die cut out of. So I really thought it was interesting to choose a pattern that had leaves and stems already existing in the background so that they would add to the layout once I've added these leaves and interdispersed them amongst the brown and the green leaves. Here we go now, so you can see with the addition of these beautiful metallic shiny leaves how much extra they give to your layout. So what I'm doing now is I'm just trying to arrange her leaf headdress uh, to make it look pretty grand like she is a leaf princess. and I'm just going to apply the clusters in there with PVA glue. Once the headdress is done, I then go around and I add some of this beautiful colored leaves to the rest of the layout where I think they are required. And this is just an intuitive process. It's just wherever I feel that there is a little bit of emptiness, I decided to put a leaf that is of a different color. So next I decide to grab a black ink gel pen and I'm basically just outlining her eyes. I'm adding the black of her eyes and I'm just going around her nose and her lips trying to bring out her features. I also added some eyelashes which totally brings her to life. She's such a cutie. I then add a few white spots just following where the original stamp had the white. I then stepped back and had a critical look at this page. It looks really cute, but if you look a little bit closer, you can see there are still spots around the outside that look like they're empty, like something needs to be there. So I decided to put some more of those metallic leaves that I sprayed, and I just basically go around doing that now.
After that's done, I flip the page over and I just cut out any excess where the leaves are sticking out of the page. I'm just making sure that our, my leaves are stuck down well. And then I grab some ground espresso, which is the darkest brown I have. And I'm basically inking around the edges of the whole layout and giving it a little bit more depth and a little bit of more character. I always say this, you need to add a little bit of extra dark value to bring out and highlight the inside of your work. And I'm using both the felt pad of my Distress Ink here as well as the sponge dropper. I want to get it as dark as I can. I then grab a vintage photo and I'm just trying to spread out and even out the lines that the Dark Espresso left. I then grab my script stamp and this is using Gathered Twig here so I'm using all my dark browns which I'm really pleased with and I'm just adding stamped background script to the leaves around the edges. They're looking really neat and I thought it would be nice to add just a little bit of texture to them as well. I'm now gonna totally chicken out and I'm just gonna cover up her face and the banner at the bottom and I'm using my Heidi Swap Shine and I'm adding droplets of gold all over my layout. I think this is absolutely gorgeous and it just adds that extra bit of bling that I know I needed. If you see also, I added some of the leaves that I die cut originally with the pattern paper. I thought that they would look interesting adding them to the headdress, but I really don't like it. And I do go back in the end and I take them off because I just want this whole piece to be united in its colors and not have anything detract from the head piece. And that is my layout for the autumn YouTube hop. Thank you so much for joining me, everybody. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and don't forget to comment below so that you're in the running for the giveaway. Speaking of which, I am so excited to announce that the giveaway is the April kit from Antivira Scrap and Craft. I did a whole unboxing on this kit, which you can watch here. I'll leave a link. This is an awesome prize and I did use some of the things in this kit to make this layout. So go ahead and comment and don't forget to hop along to all the other videos and leave a comment there so that you can be in the draw. Thank you so much for watching everybody and I'll see you in my next video.